In Mahada 23.04, the Mahada team at Catalyst IT introduces new functionality that um, brings in the possibility to create outcomes portfolios within Mahada. My name is Christina Höpner and I'm the project lead of the Mahada Open Source Portfolio project and I'd like to take you through that functionality today. We are grateful to our client Wiltshire College and University Centre for having commissioned that work in order to support their students in their learning and um, also see how other organisations can make use of that functionality for their own purposes. So the outcomes portfolio allows you to track progress against outcomes. This is a more structured approach um, and allows you to define activities to complete, therefore also allowing for collaboration on the portfolio more than has already been done in the past through smart evidence, for example, or also the portfolio completion. So it's a much more guided approach, supporting students in their portfolio journey and assisting them with creating their portfolios and documenting their learning. With that functionality, we've also been able to make a number of workflow improvements and introduce guidance that we are trialing with this new approach to creating portfolios, um, allowing us also to see if th some of those changes should also be made available in other areas of Mahara. So for the next wee while, I'll be taking you through the setup of that functionality and how you can use it. So it will be a bit of a longer video today because it is more of a real walkthrough rather than just getting it um, to the shortest possible way of presenting that information. But first, what does it actually look like at the end? Well, um, the outcomes portfolio has a dashboard page, if you will, where all the outcomes are listed and you can also see the overall completion of the number of outcomes. The outcomes, when you click on one of them, have a longer description. You can also see the outcome type associated with it and then the individual activities. These activities are actual Mahara pages that can then be signed off by a staff member and additional information regarding an outcome is available that tutors and other staff can, um, for, for which tutors and other staff can provide information in order to support the, the guidance through the achievement of that outcome and document what the student had done. So you can have as many outcomes as you like. You can have multiple um, outcome types associated with it and then individual pages that are linked to the outcomes. On these outcome, uh, on these activity pages, there is more information also available. You can define a responsible staff member, subjects, timeframes, strategy and support resources and learner support that is taking place again in order to provide more information on how much guidance a student might have received or what has been tried. A new functionality or new block is also available and um, that is the checkpoints block where you can also set an achievement level that is defined by the an instructor as well. So that is roughly the functionality that I'm going to take you through of how to set up such an outcomes portfolio and how to work with it as staff member as well as student. So I'll be switching between the staff member, which is Paula, uh, staff member, which is Petra in this case, and my student, which is Paula. To make it easier to distinguish between the two, they do have different themes here in the demo. However, in a no in normal operation, of course, you would most likely have the uh, same theme. Okay, so how do you actually set up an outcomes portfolio? Well. Um, that is an, a setting in the institution that either the site administrator or the institution administrator can activate. So you would set it to yes 
for the institution where you want to use it. By enabling that outcomes portfolio, people on Mahara that have the staff or administrator role can set up outcomes groups. Besides turning on that setting, we also need to have outcome types and outcome subjects set up. And that is done via a command line script, via a CLI script that you prepare um, by setting up two CSV files. One is to define the outcome types and one is to define the subjects that are available within your institution. And you can set up those outcome types uh, for multiple institutions and each institution can also have different levels of outcome types so can have multiple outcome categories because of course you may um, have different study programs where you want to use outcomes. So on the CSV files you define your outcome category, you give it a name, they can be doubled up because they are unique per institution. Then the institution is the short name for the institution. Then you give your outcome type a name and also an abbreviation. This abbreviation is then linked to a CSS class that is defined in the theme so that you can have the, um, yeah, the outcome types then colorized. Now for the outcome subjects, you would give each subject a category again so that it can then be paired up with the um, outcome types in the end, uh, but they can also be, be very different just so that you can distinguish them a bit better and also in the database. Then you set the institution again, the subject and um, the subject abbreviation that is not really used at this stage very much, um, but it is prepared in case it is needed to link it to some other information in the future. So once you've set up those two CSV files, um, you would upload them or you would inject them into the data, inject the information from them into the database via that CLI script. Now, we assume that that has been done because all of that takes uh, place on the server instead of in an administrator interface at this point. Now that we have the general setup done for the outcomes portfolio functionality within our organization, um, the, an institution staff member can set up a group that uh, can take outcomes and that can take outcome portfolios. So in this case, I've already set it up, but just to show you the settings briefly, um, I am a staff member here um, as Petra and there I can choose my group type and the role. In this case, I have outcomes portfolios and um, that can take three roles. So a member, a tutor and administrator. The member is the regular student. Then the tutor is typically a staff member and the administrator is really more an administrator. The administrator has the power to not just set up this group with this group type, but also to define the outcomes. Tutors are not able to define outcomes. However, they can do everything else in the group in order to support the student. Now with the group type um, set, uh, typically you would also set this group to be controlled so that a student can't leave the group and um, the rest would just typically stay the same at this point because all the portfolio work actually takes place in the group so that you can collaborate on the portfolio. In order to collaborate, all group members need to be able to create and edit content. You can decide who should receive comment notifications. In this case, I've left it on for all so that both students and also staff receive notifications when somebody leaves comments or feedback. 
Now that the group has been set up, you can create portfolios. What you see immediately in this case is that the staff member only has the create button available because for the time being, it is not possible to make a copy of that outcomes portfolio. And also if I go into this area as a student, I do not have the create button nor the copy button available because this group type specifies that students cannot set up portfolios. So this is quite a bit of guidance then to avoid that students accident accidentally set up pages or collections. So in our case, um, if you set up a new collection or uh, since I already have one set up here, I'll show you the configuration screen directly. You would configure the collection and automatically because the group type is outcomes portfolio, the outcomes portfolio would be selected um, in order for the following pages to be created um, as needed. I've also selected an outcomes category. In this case, I have two categories available, foundation and level one, which correspond to the two categories that I have set up for the organization here for this institution. Now, when you click the continue button, typically in a collection, you would uh, be taken to the page where you can select the pages that should be part of this collection. However, in this case, you are taken to the uh, management screen for the outcomes because we do want to set up outcomes next since the structure is that outcomes are set up, pages become part of outcomes, and then content is being put into the pages. So here I've already set up a number of outcomes. They always have a short title followed by a full title because sometimes these outcomes might be rather long but what we want to avoid is that that overview page gets too busy and has too much information on it in order to then become unmanageable now you can also select an outcome type you don't have to select one um, uh, but you can do so and you can set up as many outcomes as you like. You can also delete outcomes um, as long as no pages have been associated with that. So we have um, altogether five outcomes. And at the bottom, I can select more if I like. So immediately a new field set becomes available where I can fill in the outcome or I can also remove it. Now, once you save that page, it sets up this overview page where you see the short names of each outcome. And then when you open the panel, you see the long title of the outcome as well as the outcome type that is represented by the short name that uh, was defined in the CSV file. Now, in order to know what this means, you can click the help icon and the long titles are then being displayed for the outcome types. And that then also means that you can set up different outcome types depending on a study program or whatever else other purpose you use this outcomes portfolio with. Of course, like with anything in Mahara, you can change the language strings um, if you want to use different language for that functionality across your entire site. Now, when you set up the, uh, the outcomes first, um, they are, of course, not signed off or marked as completed. So typically it looks like this, that you have your outcome type and then that there's no activity here. And you can also define whether support is already taking place and what that progress looks like. Now the add activity button is available to group tutors 
and also to group administrators. However, uh, students won't see that option because they cannot set up an activity page since there is a bit more information needed in order to set that up. So if we set up an activity page that is by clicking the activity page icon and then giving the page a title. And you can also give it a longer activity description. Again, so that the page title does not get too long, but you still have all the details available that you might want to have. Now, here comes the subject. So as you can see, you can you, you have the subject categories available and then also the actual subjects um, associated with it. In this case, you see all the subjects on the entire site. Um, that can be something that can be limited in the future. So in this case, um, we have group projects and I'll just assign that to computer science. Now for the responsible staff member, if your group contains more than one tutor and or administrator, you will see a drop down menu that uh, shows all of them so that you can select another person to be the responsible staff member. Uh, but usually your name is selected first if you set it up. You can also define a start date for the activity and also an anticipated end date if you want to in order to showcase when students are expected to have finished that activity. Those dates are currently not tracked um, in a sort of reminder and that can be another functionality to add in the future. Last but not least, on the special area for the activity description, you would set the levels of achievement for that particular activity. So these can be general categories or um, really some that are very specific to this particular activity. Level one is usually the, the highest level and um, level four is always that it's not been demonstrated so that um, the, it's, it's always the, the lowest one. Once you save that, the information is set up and you are taken to the edit screen of the page. So you have the page title with the short title of the activity and then the longer title is being displayed as a panel here. And you see immediately to which outcome this activity belongs, to which outcome type and whether this page has been signed off by a tutor or not. When you click the panel header, you see more information, namely the responsible staff member, the subject to which this port portfolio page belongs, the time frame, and then the uh, three elements that we staff can provide more information on how they are helping students achieve that activity. In this case, um, I had set the site settings so that a first checkpoint is immediately added as a block because um, with checkpoints, you track the progress of students throughout. Now, if I go back to the overview page for the outcomes, I can see that this page has been added to my outcomes and it is associated with that last outcome. When I click on it, it takes me immediately into the edit mode of the page. So that is something that um, is new to Mahara. And again, to improve the, the workflow and avoid too many clicks, 
because as long as a page has not been signed off, we assume that students and our staff want to work on it and therefore add to the portfolio. And so we wanted to make it easier to do that. So instead of going into the display mode, you immediately enter edit mode. However, if you have a page that has been signed off, then you're taken directly into the display mode because in this case, we assume that you want to view it because it has already been marked as yes, all the activities have been done and therefore you shouldn't go into edit mode directly. However, you can still always edit <coughs> this activity page if you like. So if we are going back to the outcomes and look at one of the activities, um, in this case, let's look at um, here. Here in this case, you can see that it's a different outcome type. They have four different uh, icon being displayed and you can always see the sign off. So the sign off is always done by a staff member and not by a student. Now, because the outcome has already been marked as completed, you cannot add more information to the progress, but that can only be done on outcomes that do not yet have, that have not yet been marked as completed. And if we are looking at one of these last ones, I can just add something for the progress here by the tutor. Saving this information automatically saves it into the database. Um, the page doesn't refresh. And I can also say that support is taking place again to indicate that the uh, um, that this activity has already been started and that the staff member is looking after the student. Now, if I go to this page again as student and refresh it so that I have all the information, the new information available, I can see that I cannot mark an outcome as completed. And I can also not sign off an activity page. As student, I can see but not activate the support is taking place button. And I can also see the information that the staff member has added, um, but cannot change it. And so whenever the information is updated either by Petra or by another staff member, if there were somebody else in the group, then um, only the latest information would be displayed. Now, as a student, I can click the activity page and um, I can again see the information that has been added by a staff member. And since this is the actual portfolio page, I can now add my content to it. So as normally I can add text blocks, images, files, or anything else that I like to this portfolio page in order to provide the evidence uh, of my learning as well as um, talk about my learning. I can also use the checkpoint to check in on what I have done to talk about my progress. So for example, in this case, I can just write something briefly and that is added as checkpoint. Now I'm logged in again as the, uh, as the staff member Petra. So there I can also leave a checkpoint comment that is then added to it. And depending on the institution settings for the order of comments, it will be added in chronological or reverse chronological order. 
Now, if I wanted to say that what strategies and support is being provided, I can add that to the header section of this portfolio, save that information in the same thing with resources, for example. And if I look at that now as student, I have that information available, but cannot change it myself. And of course, I can also see what Petra had written on the checkpoint. Now, as staff member, if I feel like that the first checkpoint that was defined as part of this activity has been achieved, I can select the achievement level, which is either level one, two, three, and four. In order to know what these levels mean, I can click the help icon and then see the terms that I've defined on in the page settings directly here. We had decided against using the terms themselves in the drop down menu in order to not make it too long because some might choose very long words for it. So I can select an achievement level, save that, and then it is selected. I cannot change that achievement level anymore. The achievement level is currently not tracked on the outcomes overview page. Um, you can have multiple checkpoints on the page, so you would always go to the page itself in order to see which checkpoints have been achieved and at which levels. Now, when a staff member, I feel that the activity has been successfully completed by um, Paula, by the student, I can sign off on the page either directly here on the page itself or alternatively, I could also do that on the outcomes overview page. Similarly to what you do with a portfolio completion page. So you can change the setting here, also revert it or select it again. Now the outcomes are not automatically marked as completed when um, all of the activities have been signed off because it could be that um, you do want to add another activity to it in order to complete the outcome. So we did not want to presume that they were all done or sometimes you might also decide that um, when a particular page is or activity is not yet completed, the outcome itself has been already achieved um, through other work that the student had done. And so again, if you actually sign off an outcome as staff member, you will lose the add activity button and can also not make changes to the progress information. So sign that off, mark it as complete also changes the overall completion percentage for the outcomes. And this is now locked in. However, you could, if you've um, marked the outcome as completed by accident, you could um, unmark it again and then have students add more content if you like. So that constitutes the outcomes portfolio functionality. Uh, there, there's quite a lot of um, different functionalities included in here. And um, so just to, to summarize things a little bit, um, we, we use the normal collection, but on a group level so that students as well as staff members can complete the portfolio. You have an overview page that shows you the completion of the overall outcomes that are defined by a group administrator, so a, st a staff member or an administrator. And then for each outcome, you can define activities that should be completed in order to achieve 
the overall outcome and mark that as completed. As staff member, you can leave additional comments on the progress of the student in order to help them along in their portfolio journey and um, completing the outcome. You can also see very easily which activities have already been completed with that uh, sign-up functionality that is available for each activity page. And as student, you can, um, on a page itself, also have regular portfolio content and also checkpoint content that allows you to track your progress within a particular activity for an outcome. We are pulling information that is available on the overview page into the individual activity pages so that it's quite obvious for which outcome and outcome type this activity page is. And then the uh, staff member can also provide additional support information for completing that activity here for the student um, or also for other staff members that are involved in supporting the student. All the pages that are part of this collection are available via the regular page navigation menu. However, you would not add a page directly to the collection itself. You would do that always via the overview page here, via the outcomes overview page. And that is something nice and convenient, I find, because you don't have to go outside, go to the group level, create a page, move it then into the collection, but you are actually setting up the page as part of the collection. And by clicking the Add button here within a particular outcome, you immediately associate that activity with the outcome. And lastly, another usability improvement is that when you are still working on a activity on an activity page that so a page that hasn't been signed off you enter the edit mode directly both as staff member and as student but as soon as the page has been signed off you then enter it in display mode because we assume that you might only want to view the page but not edit it anymore you would also have seen that blocks are added full width now instead of um, a third of the page width. So that is also an improvement um, that was made in particular thinking about more mobile use of the site uh, so that when you create portfolio pages on a mobile device that their blocks automatically go across the entire width than when you move to a desktop or laptop. This was the rundown of the outcomes portfolio functionality, more from the technical side of things, both as instructor, staff member, as well as also from the student side. So I look forward to hearing from you how you are making use of that functionality, whether you want to use it for outcomes or um, whether you can imagine using it also for something else.